I just had to uh, leave the conference because we're, uh, anyways, I have other obligations, unfortunately, that I have to go take care of. A quick introduction to this video, but also a shout out to Alan Woods of Woods Bees in Centralia, uh, Washington. Uh, him and his wife did a lot of work, as well as, you know, a lot of other people from the Washington State Beekeepers Association putting this conference together. Incredible speakers and uh, looking forward to next year already. Um, real quick introduction on this hive style and that is and you're gonna hear Victor who designed this talk more about it but one thing he said after I turned the camera off which I wanted to add is that they saw I think it was a 33 percent increase in their hunt just in their honey production of using these because of the bees not having to use their energy resources for regulating the temperature either cooling or heating in their hive. Uh, I'm not saying one way or the other uh, of you know the practicality of this or not. I'll let you judge that. Uh, however, I do see myself experimenting with these in the next few months um, just because, yeah, I, I see a lot of advantages to them. But anyways, to Victor uh, kind of giving us a rundown of the design and his thinking behind it. So with uh, with Victor from his high of IQ, right? High of IQ, and uh, just going over just some of the incredible benefits. And so we're kind of just picking up. I'm asking from a commercial side, obviously. You're a commercial beekeeper, and you came up with this design. Um, so we we're just talking about the pallet design. Up, uh, go ahead, Victor. And I'll... Yeah, so this is our fourth generation design. Um, it's just been a Evolution, but, uh, so we started using steel pallets about seven or eight, ten years ago, I think it was, close to ten years ago, and just optimizing them over time. We've got fold-out legs. We started to think about how we could raise the height of the hive to, to, to combat pests like, uh, like cane toads okay. in Australia. Yeah. Uh, but also we can operate on uneven sites, so we've got a lot of great flora in the mountain country yes. especially. So with this pallet, we can pop out two legs on the low side. So if it's on sloping lengthways, we can pop the two end ones out. If it's sloping away sideways, so it allows us to use uneven sites wow. uh, on the hive. But you know, but a lot of the time we don't deploy the legs because we're on nice flat gravel sides. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, I use them. So it's just there. There's a hive tool slot here <laughs> where you just pop. You just pop the legs out. Okay. That little slot there. Yeah, yeah. Because um, that little indentation there locks into a hole in the sheet metal, and you just need that leverage to pop it out. So that prevents them dropping down when you're transporting the hives. And... So the other thing we did too is pallets get hooked up, you know, when you're loading on the truck and you're pushing a pallet in. Yes. So we put this new retainer in for the just We're just about to upgrade our hive retainer so it's smooth. There's nothing here that can catch. So when we're pushing a pallet past, nice. yeah. yeah. And same sideways, they go. There's nothing on the pallet that can hook up when you're unloading yes, them on the yes, truck. Yes, yes. And what, so I know we were talking, or I was talking with Alan from Woods Bees about the lifespan of the, the boxes and it's 30, 30 years or projected? It's or, a lifetime. Uh, or a lifetime. Could be 30 years, but because the product doesn't rot yeah. and it's very stable. Yeah. So when you paint a wooden hive, what we used to paint, you know, the, the timber moves, you get cracks in your wood, in your, in your paint. Right. And absorbs, then they absorb moisture, and then your paint starts to peel off. With this product, it's very stable. It doesn't move. It, it, it doesn't compete. Heat doesn't affect it. It's very stable. Sure. And so the paint, this is this is just normal acrylic exterior grade house paint. Okay. Which has a 20 to 30 year lot warranty, depending on the premium of the level of paint sure, you buy. Sure, sure, sure. So this, the paint is just going to protect it as well so yeah it's a very long lived product yeah and so same thing with the pallet too then because I, I imagine like i know for us and i'm sure you you know when you're yeah. first uh, starting out yours you're doing all woodenware yeah. and just things get beat up well, wooden pallets is a killer so there's a few things with wood we discovered is it holds bugs yeah yeah spores, yep. moisture they get heavy yes. in winter and that moisture when we went to steel pallets <clears> we just noticed that because steel, it's hard for bugs to live on steel. 
Yeah, right. It, and it dries very quickly, so it gets wet, but then it dries. As soon as that sun hits it, it dries. With yeah. wood, it takes weeks, months to dry out after winter, after yes. wet winter. And how do you, you know, Alan answered this, but I think probably a lot of people wonder, because that was the same thing, is if you're using a hive tool, yeah. on this like i was thinking okay well styrofoam and a hive tool that's gonna eat it up yeah but... so we've got a uh, well, i've got a hive tool this on one of my deployed types i don't know what happened to it but yeah so we've got the hive tool protection all the way around to so we've got this plastic edge mm -hmm. and this is really important for a number of reasons firstly the interlocking design for, for, for commercial beekeepers doing transporting hops, sure. it's an awesome feature. Yeah. Right? Yes. It locks in. Yes. And then it's weatherproofing because the weather, if, even if you've got really driving rain coming in here, it can't come into the hive. Whereas on our wooden hives, it used to sort of come in and you get a chiller sure. reaction yes. because you've got a warmth in here, cold yep. out here. Yep. So the hive actually starts to draw moisture in through capillary action. Uh, so that's a weather protector. Also bug protection, because we have, uh, when you've got EPS, bugs are like this product. If you give them a, a home somewhere. Or, yeah. So the bugs would come in and lay their eggs. Oh, okay. If, if this box was sitting slightly up, because of, you know, maybe there's a bit of prop, prop or some comb, or the, the beekeeper hasn't put it back on properly, the bugs will come in here and lay their eggs. But with the plastic, they don't like it. Bugs don't find this attractive at all. So got we solve that bug problem. And then the hive tool protection. The J-hook hive tool works great, but we've got a new hive tool that we've designed for the hive. And so I use, I come into the hive like this and leverage. Sure. And then you can leverage your frames. Got it. So that, that step, that step's really important. Because on, yeah. you can't push it through like you can on a wooden sure, hive, right? Sure. No, that's so, and uh, you know, I think the other thing you're talking about too is just like in the summers. I mean, here, I think it was last year we had four or five days in the hundreds, and you're talking, you deal with that every oh, summer. I was down in Florida, uh, July, I think, August, July, yeah, July. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. The, the humidity, and I visited some commercial beekeepers down there, and their hives were like bearded, you know, beating right up the front. Yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, <laughs> You know, once the temperature goes above 96, 97 Fahrenheit, which is 35, 36, so the brood starts to die. So we don't know how much brood's actually dying in those situations because right. you don't see it, they're just right. like gone. Right. So we're creating heat, I believe heat has a massive stress factor on your bees. It's yeah. almost as much or worse than cold, yes. cold and wet. Yes. So, when you see your bees bearding, you think, oh, great, they're, they're strong <laughs> colonies and they're doing great. Well, they're actually under a lot of stress. Yeah. If you're doing, putting a colony under an extreme amount of stress, they're going to try to keep their brood alive by bearding. That's when you have beetle gestation problems <clears throat> and other problems in the hive because the bees aren't in there defending and doing hive hygiene. Sure, sure. No, that's, and what I'll do is just obviously, what's your website? HiveIQ.com. HiveIQ.com. Well, I'll, I'll put that down in so the. In Australia, our website is HiveIQ.com.au. Okay. In the US, it's HiveIQ.com. Got it. And Woods Bees is the distributor for this yep. area right in, now? In uh, southern okay. Washington. State. Say greetings. Hi. <laughs> Woods is our uh, dealer. Okay. And just, you know, appreciate your time, Victor. Real quickly, if you want, because I'm just thinking people obviously can go to your website if they have other questions, but I mean, you've got so much thought out here. I mean, you've got a divider board. If you want to make nukes, it's also a feeder. There's queen excluders, right? I mean, really, is there really any hive component that, I mean, you've got all the main hive components for the system, right? That's right. I mean, we've got so. our dual purpose feeder over here, <clears throat> which is uh, pretty Oh, yeah, right. You know, so this one, this is a feeder. One of the things I really didn't like when I was feeding my hives is having to, I have to take the liquid feeder off, put protein in the hive, and then, you know, you spill it. Yep. <laughs> so now we made it so you could put your protein in the middle here, <laughs> and, and your bees can access both Smart. food sources yes. from the one feeder. Yep. Um, and we also did a lot of testing on this design for prevent, to prevent drowning. Sure, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing we discovered is if you get this space wrong, 
just the gap between here and where the bees come down. Sure. If that's slight, you know, if it's a little bit too wide, it means you start to get drowning. Yeah. If you get it just right, we've, we've, we've got it to a point now, all our testing, we've got zero, almost, well, pretty much zero. Well, because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, once again, I'm, I'm coming at it from a, a, a commercial standpoint. I'm thinking just the labor that saves. But I'm also thinking, even if a person has a handful of hives, a common concern, I'm sure you hear too, is, well, you know, I'm getting to be aged now. Honey's heavy or the bees or the hives are heavy or whatever else. And so all of this is just making that so much more convenient. And, man, oh, Victor, thank you. So, and, and then there's a scale here too, right? Yeah, the oh, or your, is, uh, coming in uh, January here. Medium, so yeah, we'll and then be producing them in Australia from next week. And actually. that's a bee escape, right on this the left. <coughs> yeah, this is just a standard bee escape. Yeah, um, you can, we can do the corner fence or the round one, sure. But all we've done here really is just developed our own uh, integrated interlocking. When you put it on the hive, I mean, this is on a feeder, which is not yeah. really a true thing. Or sure, sure. And then you put your super, this one's full of honey and bees. Mm -hmm. right on Yep. And it's interlocking, and this is important because um, you know when you do that, you've got a robbing potential. Right. That, that interlocking and that seal is quite important. Yeah. Yes. Man, no, thank you again, like Victor. Said, yes, we have the high scales and uh, in hive temperature, humidity sensors, uh, radar, and a bunch of techniques. So we're building beekeeping management software here, which is. It's, it's enterprise software, so as sure. a commercial beekeeper, I'll build it for commercial beekeeping. The yes. cool thing is, obvious needs to do almost all the same things yeah. that commercials do. Yes. Uh, so we've, we're trying to make it so it's relevant to hobbies and commercial sure. beekeepers. Sure, sure. No, Victor, thank you so much again. Uh, this has just been absolutely fascinating. You know, it's just, 